Zindabad friends, this is Hindu Prakash Singh. Uh, I have been working on the issue of homelessness for the last 20 years and uh, been part of the women's movement for about 40 years as such. And uh, working with the homelessness came also because we had done a study um, way back in 1993 uh, for an organization called Voluntary Health Station of uh, India. And uh, there we did come across a couple of people who were homeless and um, also, I think uh, around uh, 1999, uh, I had a meeting with Harsh Mandar and uh, he invited me to do this work uh, with Action Aid for uh, homeless people. And uh, I think the work was, of course, very tough because um, that time uh, there weren't any publications, any write-ups, any surveys and all on homeless people. And uh, so we went about, uh, you know, like when Tago talks about, you know, the paths are made by walking. So for us, it was actually parts were made by walking. And we started the work uh, around 1999, but major work happened from 2000 onwards. And uh, we went about doing the survey of the homeless people in uh, month of May and June 2000. And uh, the survey that we did was uh, pretty unique where, uh, you know, it, much of it was um, an interview from about seven o'clock in the evening until uh, midnight. And from midnight, we had the head count. And uh, the head count, is, head count gave us a figure of about 52,765 people sleeping on the footpaths of Delhi. And uh, so we say that uh, for everyone counted, there's one missed. So surely there must be about 100,000 people on the streets of Delhi. I'm talking of 2,000. And, um, you know, uh, we also started the work after this uh, study that we did and the study showed something remarkable. The study came out in 2001 called the Capital is Homeless. And the study showed that most of the people um, who are homeless, they were homeless because they had migrated from places like UP, Bihar, West Bengal, Maharashtra, Madhya Pradesh and all that. And most of them who are homeless, they'd come because of poverty and unemployment. And um, over 90 percent had no identification, no voter's card, no ration cards, nothing. So, and at that point, you know, uh, there were barely about uh, 19 shelters for the homeless people. And these were uh, shelters from which were open from 7 o'clock in the evening until 5, 6 in the morning. So, these were called night shelters. And uh, so of the 21 planned, there were 19 that came up and by 2001, only 10 remained because many shelters got demolished due to construction of metro and other developments that took place in Delhi. Uh, in fact, much of our program, you know, as I said, that like it emerged from, uh, you know, our study and uh, we realized that people who are homeless, they are homeless, as we have read in economic textbooks and all that, economics textbooks, that, you know, uh, as students, we were taught that people come because of two factors to cities due to, uh, you know, pull and push factor. But we realized that, you know, most of the people who, are, who hit street, uh, the streets of Delhi and the places, they are here because of distressed migration. They are pushed out of rural economy due to floods and disasters and, uh, you know, uh, all kinds of man-made disasters and man-made uh, problems that they, f that they face. And uh, due to the conditions prevailing, you know, uh, they had no option but to be on the streets. And we came across uh, times, you know, like, because we started the work, you know, uh, in fact, <clears throat> we also had, um, we started various programs, like we had street medicine at Jama Masjid, we had uh, night vigils, like from 9 o'clock in the night until early morning, we used to be on the streets of Delhi. And that's when we saw uh, the stark reality of homeless people. We came across um, police bashing up homeless people, black and blue. Uh, we came across dead bodies of the homeless people on the streets of Delhi, when we went about distributing blankets to them. And um, so that's when we called the largest civil society and, um, you know, uh, uh, large number of people uh, to support us, but things were not moving actually. And um, that's when uh, we moved uh, PIL in the Delhi High Court around 2001. And due to that PIL that came in the High Court, 
uh, you know, uh, we got uh, some fantastic orders which said that, uh, you know, um, uh, it commanded the Municipal Corporation of Delhi, uh, Islam and JJ Wing, to give us, that time I was part of Ashtar Dikar Abhiyan, I was his director, to give us a couple of shelters on a model basis so that we can run and show. And so we got the shelters at Fatehpuri and Fountain Chowk and all that. And uh, we started running shelters as such. So the work continued and, um, you know, uh, so for us, the idea was after learning from uh, Delhi, we would take the work to other cities and all. So we took the work to Mumbai, Chennai, Kolkata, Hyderabad, Lucknow, Patna, like that, many cities. And all over the problem was the same. One thing which also we realized was that, you know, um, the census that takes place um, uh, in the country, that actually left many homeless people unenumerated. We saw that in 2001 and 2011. But this is not a point to mention here at the moment. So, um, uh, you know, uh, we, um, so who are the homeless people that we talk about, you know? So these are the people who actually are sleeping on the footpaths of Delhi. They are the ones who sleep on the road medians. They are the ones who would sleep in the parks, on the handcarts, on flyover, uh, you know, um, boundaries. So literally come night, and then the homeless people would emerge all over the city as such. And, uh, <clears throat> and most of these people that we, um, you know, uh, was to work with, they were laborers, they were workers, they were not beggars. So that's the reason why, you know, um, when we kept the work happening, so about 2010, you know, you know, we coined this term called city makers, that since they are workers, they are laborers, and uh, so they have every right to the city. And with that proviso, we went about working. And I must say that we filed, um, you know, because we were getting to know the situation in the country. And uh, we realized that the condition of homeless people across the country was bad. So we filed a PIL in Supreme Court in 2003. Uh, it was 572 of 2003. And, um, you know, we realized that um, because Bureaucracy was not functioning at all. I think we uh, we tried to request the chief minister and everybody. Things were not happening. Media was supporting us, but we know the limitations also of media for the matter. So um, due to this PIL that in High Court and in Supreme Court, <clears throat> you know, while media kept reporting and all that, it took about ten years in Supreme Court for this case to get activated. So 2013 got activated, but good fortunes for us that, you know. Uh, since the work was happening, also I want to mention here that, um, you know, uh, that uh, while the work was sincere, media was reporting it, there was a point in 2009 when the MCD demolished one of the shelters, Times of India, Hindu, you know, reported the matter. And good fortune for us that Justice A.P. Shah was the Chief Justice of Delhi High Court. He took up the matter sumoto on 6th of um, January 2010. And we had about 100 hearings in Delhi High Court, due to which the shelters, which were about 10, it had come to 20, it started increasing to about 50, 70, 100, like that. And in the 100 hearings till 2015, um, <coughs> you know, uh, we had many chief justices coming, come and go. Uh, there were fantastic orders that came through Delhi High Court. And in the meanwhile, we had Supreme Court, um, you know, uh, coming in, and we had... Um, uh, Prashant Bhushan and all supporting us. We had just, in fact, we had um, uh, E.R. Kumar who had filed another um, PIL in 2003 only. So his PIL and our PIL got clubbed together. His is uh, 55 of 2003, as is 572 of 2003. And um, uh, due to the combined might of these two PILs, Supreme Court got active in 2013. And due to that, the shelters have been coming up in a big way across the country. And around 2013, um, you know, uh, the UN government uh, had invited us for, um, you know, a meeting uh, called by the National Rezi Council. And uh, due to, in the meeting, National Urban Library Mission got drafted. And under the NULM, uh, the clause of 50 square feet per person also came in. And so Supreme Court, which uh, it used the uh, Delhi master plan's uh, man, uh, mandate of having one shelter for 100,000 population. And then it also started using in terms of the NULM criteria of 50 square feet per person. 
So now what's happening is that all over the country, the shelters are opening up. Now Delhi, which had 10 shelters in 2001, today has close to 400 shelters. And the, uh, of which of course there are about um, 100 buildings, another 100 are Poda cabins, and about 150 are you know, uh, pagoda shelters and all that, about 200 pagoda shelters. The pagoda shelters will close, but I think surely we have about 200 shelters in Delhi as such. And shelters are coming up all over the country. Uh, there are some uh, cities where I think, uh, you know, uh, 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 I think we, we uh, require more support. Uh, and I think the high courts like in Mumbai and all are taking the issues as such. And uh, But uh, I want to just say also that, you know, it was due to um, uh, proactive approach of, say, the Delhi High Court, which took the matter so moto that things came up. And so it was like 10 years of a work that was on ground in 2010, because of which, you know, um, I think High Court's coming in was very, very important. And so I also realized, you know, that um, law is a very important tool uh, to mitigate and to address poverty. And we have seen that how uh, you know, uh, the, the um, enforcement of law is very important and at times the courts will not be able to intervene until the ground realities are taken to them. So PIL becomes a very important mode and uh, thankfully whether it was High Court of Delhi, High Court of Mumbai, High Court um, uh, of Karnataka or High Court uh, you know, of other places as well as Supreme Court, we've had um, good orders coming from all these courts as such. And, of course, we realize that the courts are the last option. It is not the first thing. Courts are expensive at times, but, but for some of these great advocates that we have who are doing pro bono for us, I think, you know, uh, things have been difficult. And um, we've had um, great support from uh, friends like General Nilendra Kumarji is there, who has heard about our work and wanted to, us to contribute to his book. And I want to reiterate that uh, you know, uh, it's due to uh, the work that we did, one, yes, for sure, uh, due to media supporting the work and due to court coming in, I think we could bring the change. And so the development, if you talk about development happening in the country, I think law is a very important tool. And for many of the people that we work with, the you know, whether it's Gandhi's last person, you know, jo hai, pe log hai, jinke baat karte hai, un tak law le jane ka, I think one two organizations is there to support the work as such. But if bureaucracy doesn't function, if uh, people's representatives, MLAs and MPs don't function, I think court is a last resort. And fortunately for us, maybe you know um, that we were able to use law, um, और उसके कारण जो है मुझे लगता है कि बहुत जबरदस्त बदलाव आए समाज के अंदर जो है एंड आज कम से कम जब ठंड पड़ती है और जब कोविड था व्हेन वी हैड कोविड 19 दिल्ली वाज रीलिंग अंडर लॉट्स ऑफ डेथ्स एंड ऑल दैट बट आई मस्ट टेल यू दैट वन सेक्शन ऑफ पॉपुलेशन एस्केप डेथ एंड इट वाज होमलेस पीपल आई लॉस्ट माय वाइफ ड्यू टू कोविड ओके बट आवर होमलेस पीपल इन शेल्टर्स वाज सेव्ड एंड प्रोटेक्टेड just because I think we had, a, we had courts in the country protecting uh, homeless people. And so personally we feel that, you know, I think um, if law is used positively, if courts intervene at the right time, uh, you know, and if we have um, proactive judges coming in, and I think advocate friends, you know, that um, who came to support us, who are part of our work also, I think we can bring the change as such. And we can decimate poverty, we can enhance development of the country by using laws positively. Thank you.